God, I ask that you would put your words in my mouth. I ask, Lord, that <clears throat> you would give me the, the, the ability, the Holy Spirit, as you hear the words from the King, from King Jesus, and and that, that you would give me the words to speak. Take over, Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to begin at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There's something that I want to present to you. Let's start at verse one. Now, we we talked about the seven levels of the anointing. We're just gonna. I'm gonna simply call this. Um. Something like po the power of answered prayer, or uh, your power. I think I'll call it your power in God. And I want to I want to present something to you. You know, one time, one time, Pastor Mickey, uh, in talking about the courts of heaven, teaching by Doc by Robert Henderson, he said. You know, you got ministers like Benny Hinn, you know, like the the healing evangelists and things like that. And then you have us common folk. And he said, the Lord gave Robert Henderson this teaching to help us common folk be able to tap into that power. Um, and here's why I say, I mean, that's one thing. And then another thing... How many of you, I have, how many of you have had somebody that either you've had somebody say to you, man, you've got a special connection with God, or you said that to somebody else? Well, how many times maybe have you submitted, you know, you sent money to a certain minister to get a prayer shawl, anointed especially by them, um, prayed over by them or whatever. In Hebrews, let's see if there's a here. It's not okay. Anyway, in Hebrews four sixteen, actually we're gonna go there too. Because today we're gonna go back to basics. But I want to I want to show you. I also want to tell you some tricks, so to speak, um, on what how the Lord has taught me in prayer. Aside from what I've learned about the courts, of, I'm not going to even get into the courts of heaven teaching. Um, I, I've talked about it somewhat in excitement in the past, um, but I'm not going to get into that. Now, let's read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. Um, now, let's back up verse 11. 
Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the joints, I mean, to, to the division of the soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, so all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we are we must give an account. Verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, this means, you know, in the Old Testament, the high priest was not allowed to come before, you know, if, if you look at, actually, let's go there. Let's go there. I want to take you through a, uh, through a, a, to use a fancy word, an exposition of scripture. I want to take you through a methodical understanding and study of the Word of God to show you what we are given as a New Testament believer. Um, now, there are certain, you know, we can, we can all prophesy, yet some are called to be apostles and prophets. We can all be apostolic. You know, I, I guess you could say there are sp special offices that people hold, but yet we all have the anointing to walk in that grace or that gifting. Um, but it's not that there's an... I don't believe, according to the Word of God... There, we are all a high pre. We are all a priestly uh, class. We are kings and priests in the earth. Now, let me read this to you. Leviticus chapter ten, verse one. And Lord, I ask that the anointing of Samuel would 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 be on this podcast. That not one word would fall to the ground, and that not one word would fall on hard, on stony soil, or, but that it would all yield fruit. That, Lord, you, you would confirm your word with signs and wonders, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and, and offered... Profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Then Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uzael, the uncle of, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, "Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary of the camp uh, out of the camp." So they went near and carried them by their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said to Aaron. And to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons, do not uncover your heads, nor tear, uh, nor tear your clothes, lest you die, and wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail, bewail the burning which the Lord has kindled. You shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of meeting 
lest you die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. Now, verse 8. Then the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or intoxicating drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die. It must be a statute forever throughout your generations, that you may distinguish between holy and, and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar the, uh, and Ithamar, his sons, who were left. Take the grain offering that remains of the offerings made by fire to the Lord, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your due and your son's due of the sacrifices made by fire to the Lord. For so I have been commanded. The breast, the breast of the weave offering and the thigh of the heave offering you shall eat in a clean place. You, your sons, and your daughters with you. For they are your due and your sons due which are given from the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The thigh of the heave offering and the breast of the, of the wave offering, I meant to say, they shall bring with the offerings of fat made by fire to offer it and to offer as a wave offering before the Lord. And, you shall, and it shall be yours and your sons with you, by a statute forever as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses made careful inquiry about the goat of the sin offering, and there it was burned up. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar and the sons of Aaron who were left, saying, Why have you not eaten the sin offering in a holy place, since it is most holy, and God has given it to you to to bear the guilt of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord. See, its blood was not brought inside the holy place. Indeed, you should have eaten it in a holy place as I, as I commanded. And Aaron said to Moses, Look, this day they have offered their sin offering and the, and the burnt offering before the Lord, and such things have befallen me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? So when, when Moses heard that, he was content. Now, I thought it would be there. But sometime after this, in Leviticus, it prescribes... I apologize, folks. Uh, so we basically just read the whole chapter 10. Um, but it prescribes laws concerning the high priesthood. And it talks about how that they are to enter in to the Holy of Holies only once a year. Now, as I was reading... You know, again, the Lord is leading me to speak on this. As I was reading that chapter, the Holy Spirit quickened me. He, he spoke to my heart. And he said, man has, has plans. That basically, man's plans are not going to be his plans. Um... And that just like in the time of Nadab and Abihu, this is a time of mourning. And he's speaking concerning the situation with IHOP, KC, and Mike Bickle. This is going to be, this is a, a changing of the guard, but it's also a warning. I mean, a time of mourning. And the Lord... 
told me to, to call. He said, I am calling a solemn assembly for my people. And now I hear him saying, is what you are doing now working for you? Is not believing in generational curses for the believer not working for you? What makes you think that sexual perversion in the bloodline is not one of the things that causes these pastors, to, these leaders to fall? What makes you think, O oh leaders of, of my bride, that Christians not having or that Christians having demons is not what's causing some of these scandals. I believe the Lord recognizes that we do have a part to play. Like me as a woman, if I were to counsel cancel counsel a man, I am to have another man in there, or as uh, Pastor Bobby Alger of, of uh, West um, Crossroads Community Church in Winchester uh, does, as Wanda has told us in her past videos, I am to have my my door open to have a a uh, screen I think in the window anyway to where people can see what's going on. I am to take precautions, and people probably don't do that, but the Lord is saying that. He is indicting the leaders of, of, of the church. Those that are charged with his bride. Because they have not taught on deliverance. They have not taught on, on generational curses. I, I also hear him saying this. And I don't. I, I I try not to name names. But I hear him saying this, Prophet Charlie Champ. I have this against you. You have hurt my. You have healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. By saying. Basically, he's saying that he has hurt. He has healed the hurt of his people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there's no peace, when he did that video on generational curses, and saying that we as believers are not, are not, I mean, are, are free completely from them, and we don't have to renounce them, and that, that those that say that we do is a lie from the enemy. Now, I, I, I only try, in fact, today, you know, I, I was just mentioning about, you know, how it seems like certain ministers meddle in other people's business and the way they teach, and I, I see why it's done, because there's times that the Lord tells me to call things out. And I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of like, really? So I, I really understand it. So th this is not going to be your average. I am a revolutionary. Actually, the Lord said to me, that, or like, like the feeling I got, shall I say, is that when he was having me state those questions, this was a revolutionary call. It was like, um, reformers. I guess you could say it's similar to Martin Luther and the 95 Theses. You're, you're challenging the status quo. Um, 
And so, I am, I, that's basically, that's it for now on, on what the Lord was leading me to do. Um, and a little bit of background, of course, you know, but I'm going to read some scripture from the out, from an outline that I put together one time. And I want you to hear these, these scriptures. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And, and also, let me just say this. For the people of God, for the leadership, but really I, I'm, I'm pretty sure for all of the people of God, God is calling us to a time of fasting and prayer. Um, a holy, like I said previously, a holy convocation. So hear you the word of the Lord. It is written in Romans 12 verse 1. And this is in the Passion Translation. All of these are going to be. It says, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God, to be His sacred living sacrifices, and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights His heart. For this becomes your genu genuine expression of worship. And... Let me read you this one in chapter 6 of Romans, verses 12 to 14. Sin is a dethroned monarch, so you must no longer give it an opportunity to rule over your life, controlling how you live and compelling you to obey its desires and cravings. So then refuse to answer its call to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Instead, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding your body to him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live now for his pleasure, ready to be used for his noble purpose. Remember this, sin will not conquer you, for God already has. You are not governed by law, but governed by the reign of the grace of God. Now, what does that mean? Okay, too often it, in the body of Christ today, it is not properly stated what sanctification versus justification is. Uh, I have lately been reading uh, an old book uh, by, the, by a guy by the name of J.C. Ryle. Uh, out of, I believe from what I've read in his book, the uh, Church of England. And it's on holiness. Now, the diff here, you know, the hyper-grace preachers and teachers want, want you to believe that it's not about works. They say, they, they, they do say, well, we don't want to diminish works, but yet it's not about works. Well, here's what they don't get. Here's what people in the church don't get today. Justification is not about works, okay? You are justified when, when, I'm going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to present the gospel right quick. For anyone that may be listening, you know, I'm talking mainly to believers right now. But I want to also present it in this way for those that may be non-Christians. So that later on when we do the altar call, you already know. When, when I present the, the, the invitation, I'll call it the invitation. Then, then you will know what what is required, or you will know, you, you know, what, how do I come to know the Lord? So, first of all, the first step, when, when you come to the Lord, you believe that God, that Jesus died on the cross, that the Father raised him from the dead, On the third day, now he sits at the right hand of God. 
And the Bible says that with the heart man believes, with the mouth it is confessed unto salvation. After that, though, once you make that confession, like when we say that prayer today, those of you that decide to, when you do and you mean it, you when you come into the kingdom, then God justifies you. Okay? Now, people use the analogy, well, maybe someday I'll have a deathbed confession. Like the thief on the cross. But the thief on the cross is not the rule. He is the exception. There are people that possibly have died and their family never knew that they became a believer in Christ. But yet on their last breath they said, Jesus, help. They may have even simply said that, or they may have said something to the effect to, to let the Lord know that they believe in Him. But most of the time, I could probably say either 99.9% .9 of the time or 9 times out of 10, however you want to splice it. People don't get that opportunity. And in fact, if Satan had it his way not 10 times out of 10, there would be no deathbed confessions because he wants to take us out. He hates us. He hates humanity. And so... When you come to the Lord, then Jesus says, then, then the Father says, okay, this one is mine. He is justified because of what Jesus did for him on the cross. And he wipes the slate clean. And it's just as though you've never done nothing wrong. It's just as though you never did anything wrong. But... Where does the works come in? Now, this this really has helped me ex helped me to understand the difference in justification and sanctification. Now, where the works come in, sanctification. Jesus said, "Sanctify them." I think something like, "Sanctify them in your truth." Um, and. That's in John seventeen seventeen. I think it is. Actually, let's turn there. Now, I just, I want, I want us to get this. Because we've got to be living sacrifices. We'll eventually get to the part about prayer. But there's something here that I feel the Lord is really capitalizing on here. Now, <clears throat> let me tell you this. The need is greater than ever. You know, I stated this before, and I stated this last Tuesday. A cry has went out before the Lord in the courts of heaven. A cry of deliverance like that of the book of Exodus. When the children of Israel were groaning under the, the tax, taskmaster's rule and slavery in Egypt. The church is being is groaning under the taskmaster's rule, the taskmaster of religion's rule. And she is basically practically screaming well well probably I'll just say crying, crying, groaning, saying I want I want free. I want free. 
And this next reformation, part of it, is, is going to be a lot of deliverance. And God right now is drawing a line. And so this is why, now, <clears throat> yeah, let's start at verse 15. Now, let's just go to verse, yeah, 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And <clears throat> sanctify them in your truth. So, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit... Jesus said, you know, when, when you will know that I have that I am sitting at the right hand of the Father when I send you the promise of the Father, when I send you the Holy Spirit whom I told you about when I was with you. And so when he when he was seated at the right hand of the Father, they were waiting in the upper room and, and then poof, Holy Spirit came down. I, I don't mean it, you know. But the Holy Spirit, as they were waiting, came down like cloven tongues of fire and a, and a, mighty, a mighty rushing wind. Um, I believe in co accompanied by, uh, or those those cloven tongues were, were made by, or basically the Holy Spirit and angel armies had come down. On the day of Pentecost. Distributing those those cloven tongues. Um, and Apostle Tim, she, you know, which really helped me. One of the people the Lord has used to help me to understand. Excuse me, let me get a drink. About angel armies. Is Apostle Tim Sheets. Help me to understand from a Holy Spirit filled and practical perspective about them. And, uh, <clears throat> but I digress. But when the day, when the Holy Spirit came, He empowered them to be witnesses to the world. And, uh, to in Samaria, in Jerusalem, Judea, even to the ends of the earth. One of the greatest signs, you know, there are people that speak in tongues that um, probably, anyway, that are pretty mean. Or they argue, or they they're just they don't have the fruits of the spirit in them. So I believe, if we were to look at the Bible and Acts, one of the because you know you got the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and then you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One of the signs that the the baptism of the Holy Spirit has come is through speaking in tongues, uh, or one of the. Like any time that people would do that, would, would get baptized, they would speak in tongues. But, character supersedes all that. And, bear with me guys. I apologize tonight, I'm rambling on a little more than I usually do. But suffice it to say, to bear the point home, sanctification, sanctification is the basis you know, it's it's the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit comes in you. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Holy Spirit, when, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, He empowers you to be a witness, and then He begin when you're sealed, actually, by the day of when you're self, when you're saved, then the Holy Spirit seals you um, until the day of redemption, and then he then he begins his work of sanctification. And one guy, uh, Pastor Noe from uh, Liberation Freedom Ministry, and you can find them on YouTube. He calls deliverance ministry sanctification ministry, and in the early church, I'm gonna say this, and then I'll go, and then we'll go on to the next segment. In the early church, and I learned this through my uh, the International School of Exorcism. Deliver exorcism deliverance was the way the early church distinguished what was heresy and what was not. And so, um. We'll be right back. Welcome back. With that as foundation, um, let's go on to the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians. And we're going to read chapter 12. Let's start at verse 1. Now, can spiritual, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one, speaking by the Spirit of God, calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are di diverse um, differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, nor slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. And we'll stop there. Now, <clears throat> you may say, but that, that proves our point that there are special ministries. Well, let me show you something in the Bible. I want to I wanna put two and two together here for us. I want to show you something. And... We're gonna go to we're gonna go to Acts, and this is where this is concerning Stephen, because I, I really want you to get this. I want you to see this. Oops, what did I do? I 
got the wrong book, of course. <laughs> I got the wrong book. Because I wasn't looking very... But I'm gonna need I'm gonna need the one I got anyway. Okay, now Book of Acts. And I'll let you know what where we are at once I get there. Go to chapter six. Verse 1. Now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Proturus, P-R-O-C-H-O-R-U-S, I may be butchering that, butchering that. Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nic Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid, their, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith and Stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and signs among the people then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen Cyrenians Alexandrians and those from Cilicia and Asia disputing with Stephen and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke then they secretly induced men to say we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God and they stirred up the people the elders and the scribes and they came upon him seized him and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Chapter 7 is Stephen's address. We're not going to read that, but for homework, I want you to read that. This is one of the things, and then I want you to look at Mark chapter 17. No, chapter 16, there is no 17. Mark chapter 16. Okay, Mark chapter 16, and we're going to look at verses 15 to 20. And in this, in this great commission, Jesus makes no distinction between ministers and, say, somebody that's, that's, Flipping burgers at McDonald's or somebody that's, you know, 
cooking in the church kitchen. There's really no distinction in the eyes of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying this, saying that, you know, I used to say, well, everyone's going to cast out demons, and everyone's going to do this. Everyone. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying there are no special classes of people. There's no excuse. Um... Although I will say this is not the great suggestion. This is the great com commission. It's a, it's a command of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that these are things that we've got to do when we're given the opportunity. We need to lay hands on the sick. We need to cast out demons. We need to, you know, probably not at the same intervals or velocity that a minister, you know, say, um, someone like Benny Hinn would do or... You know, whoever. But, and maybe with the same velocity, you just got to pray for opportunities. Say, Lord, I, I want to heal the sick. I want to cast out demons. I want to do what you told me to do. Uh, I, I, I want to pay the price. Because that's what it boils down to, is paying the price to have that special relationship with God that the person you look up to has. That's what it boils down to. Now, Mark 16, verse, starting at verse uh, 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him at, after he had risen. Verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who is baptized, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. That's on down to verse 20. So what the Lord is saying there is, this is not just for... And, and, and let, it's not like the Old Testament where there was an Elijah or an Elisha or a Isaiah or a Jeremiah or a, a Hosea, a prophet. There are prophets in the New Testament, but all of these things are available to every believer. And as I've stated before, even the realms of the spirit that were available previously only to the prophets are available to every believer. And in fact, prophetically, I heard last night um, and it, in a sermon from 2020 that, that a time is coming. Or maybe it was already here. I can't remember. But anyway, I believe I, I believe we are, if not if we're not already there, it's, it's coming. Um, actually, I'm hearing the Lord say we're here. That... That the realms of the Spirit, like the movement of the Holy Spirit is going to happen so that people know, I'll say it that way, that these realms are made available to them. And... Oh no, um, I, I asked the Lord, I always want to make sure I'm wording this correctly, and the Lord said that no, the, the veil and the spirit between the spirit world and the natural world are getting thinner, so these realms will be more readily available for the bodies of, body of Christ, even, even more than they were in the past, so that's what, that's what we're, I, I don't want to say up against, but that's what we're coming to. And Ephesians 5 
Ephesians 4, verse 11, we've established this in the past, that God has given some apostles, prophets, teachers, uh, preachers, I mean, pastors, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the, you know, unify, to, to bring us into the unity of the Son of God uh, and into a full stature of Christ so that we not be tossed about by every wind of doctrine. So this is what God has given us as a fivefold ministry to do is our job is to make sure that the that the rest of the body of Christ does not um and I believe even each other we're, we're to hold each other accountable that basically our job is that we are supposed to make sure that we're, we're to help the process along to see to, to, to see to it that the church is unified, we are coming to a full stature of the of Christ, and that we educate and equip the saints for the work of ministry, and that they are not we are not the saints are not tossed about by every wind of doctrine to and fro. That's our job. The job of the whole body of Christ is to fulfill the Great Commission, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Now I want to, we're going to switch segments again. And this next segment, we're going to talk about the principles of prayer. Um, we're going to talk about the famous passages um, We're, I'll just say we're gonna we're gonna get into the into the the main crux of the message. Oh no 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 no, I forgot. Um, let's go to let's go to First Corinthians, chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one. And this is what we're guarding against. We're going to start at verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perf perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that by the and that there are contentions among you. Now I say this that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and yet Gaius, lest anyone should say that I baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of, none effect, of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached, preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jew a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. 
Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord." Okay, I'm going to take a break, and I'm I'm going to actually be giving. I'm I'm going to read from a blog. Um, if I can find it, I'm going to try to read from a a blog, or a, a blog that um, Dr. Bob Larson wrote a while back. Um. So, and then we'll we'll talk about prayer. This podcast, as well as anything else that you run across, um, I could say that this is a sobering warning for whatever it is that you listen to. This this article, and I'm just going to read part, I'm, I'm not sure... Um, anyway, it's called Mind Control Within Christianity, and this was, uh, published on the Spiritual Freedom Church website at September 25th of this year, and I'm just going to read this. It says, some fallen members of Jesus have become victims of Christian mind control without realizing it. I'm not talking about covens of witches or a cabal of Satanists. The mind control I refer to is any system that involves unscriptural manipulation of a person's beliefs and behavior. This happens when groupthink psychological tactics are used to shape an individual's ideology and theology. An eschatological example would be Jehovah's Witnesses and their obsession with the 144,000 witnesses of Revelation 7 verse 4, or the Mormon fixation with creating what they call a quote-unquote forever family that survives death and continues in a celestial heaven where good Mormons go to procreate children and populate other planets. Other forms of religious mind control are designed to perpetrate financial sway over the money of members. Spiritual mind control creates a framework that destroys personal autonomy, creating a moral vacuum which can be manipulated by a powerful religious figure. And I'm not going to read all of this Um, and it, it, it talks about Okay, it says, you may think I'm referring to something like a bearded Eastern religion, a sectic who manipulates followers with meditation and mantras, or a separatist sect like like the David Koresh cult that ended in a fiery explosion in 1993. Uh, and also, if you want to learn more about what he's talking about there, 
look up, I think it's called Secrets in Waco, 48 Hours episode. They've got an episode on that. And it says, you may also think of the mindless moonies of the late 20th century who seem to stand on every street corner in America telling, oh, selling flowers and raising money, but the most dangerous mind control may exist in your own church or prayer group. And these are the signs to look out for. An either or mentality regarding the Bible, insisting that only the leader of the church or group knows what God is really saying. Add to this strong emotional enforcement by lengthy, intense, intensive prayer sessions accompanied by a succession of spiritual re revelations. This system is fortified by theological isolation, such as an attitude that we're right and everyone else is wrong. Um, he continues on there, and I'm not going to read all that. Cohesive pressure to give financial support so that you'll automatically get a hundred full bonus so long as the money goes to a preacher who hears directly from God on a regular basis. Personality cults, this is three, are the most egregious example of mind control among professing Christians. In most cases, the websites of such leaders are short on details about education, public uh, publications, and position papers on belief. Okay. Control is maintained by the, the revelation the leader gets, which discourage dissent. Questions about doctrine and practices are quickly put shut down. Okay. Now, and he says, and I agree with this, if you find yourself being irritated by what I've just said, that may be the first indication that you are a victim of a splintered Christian teaching that suspends critical thinking. In short, you may be affected by mind control Christianity. Heed the words of 2 Timothy 4, 3-4. Um, and you can read that about not sound doctrine. Um, again, this is called Mind Control Within Christianity. Um, type that in and then type Bob Larson. Um, and I say that just in case I, because usually I forget to put the links in the description or the show notes. Uh, but it's it's on, um, yeah, Mind Control Within Christianity. And I could, of course I couldn't read all, I mean it'd be too long. But, you know, this is something that we have to warn against. We have to guard against. We as leaders have to guard against it. And the people listening to us as leaders have to guard against it. Now, here's the attitude. First of all, before we pray, before, before we talk on prayer. Here's the attitude that I want you to have. Toward anything that I teach you, or toward anything that you hear in general, okay? Here is the attitude, and I'm going to go to Acts 17. 
Acts chapter 17. Hold on just a sec. I'll do it. Verse 10. Then the brethren Im immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. And then, of course, the Jews of Thessalonica went over to try to, you know, bring the people to their side, basically. So the, the, the people in other places that the Apostle Paul encountered, there was some that believed, but there was riots. But the ones in Berea, they read the word. They looked in the word daily to see if what Paul was telling them was true. No matter what it is that you hear from this podcast, no matter what it is that you hear from a prominent TV preacher, no matter what it is that you hear from your pastor, no matter what it is that you read online, no matter what it is that you read in a book, Test it with the Word of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Test it. Pray through it. Ask the Lord to show you where, you know, ask the Lord to, to you know, uh, yeah, just test it. Test the spirits. Okay? This is what we, as the body of Christ, the Lord is judging celebrity Christianity in this hour. Something, I, I don't know how I'd preach this, but something I have been hearing, uh, sensing in my spirit lately, God is going to start bringing this, this, the, the ten plagues on the gods, the idols of the church. You may say, gods, we only serve one God. But, okay. Celebrity Christianity is one God. It's an idol. Anyone that you put up against, you know, before God is an idol. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so... Excuse me. So, with that established, let's turn to the book of Mark. There are a lot of passages. Like there's some in Luke, Luke 18, Luke 11, about approaching Jesus as father, friend, and pro approaching God as father and friend and judge. Uh, but I want to look at the more traditional, I want to look um, first. Now let's go to John 7. John chapter 7.
Well, maybe it was Luke. I apologize. Okay, nope. I don't know, I don't remember where I found it. But it's ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall knock. I mean, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open for you. Everyone who asks, uh, everyone who seeks finds, everyone who asks, uh, or, you know, yeah. And it's that passage of scripture there. And so that's the first concept. Let me look one more place. That's the first concept that we see. Yeah, okay. It's in it's in Matthew seven verses verses seven to eight. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Okay. That was Matthew 7. Verses 7 to 12. Now we're going to turn to the book of Mark. And there's a passage about this in the book of Matthew. I think it's chapter 21. But we're going to go to the familiar passage of Mark chapter 11. Verse, when I start at verse 23, I'm thinking it is. Actually, let's start at verse 11. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Beth Bethany with the twelve. Oh, sorry, not verse 11. Let's start at verse 1. Okay, yeah. Verse 12 then. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he, w he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went into the temple 
This is when he began to, to cleanse the temple. Let's skip down to verse 20. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Now that's the key, have faith in God. Okay. Um... Let's continue, verse 23. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And then he ties forgiveness in with prayer. Now, what I want, what the the point that I want to bring out, people say, well, just say, I believe, I receive. Now, I want to tell you how the Lord has taught me this concept. Okay. Um. And and this was during the course of, the, the, I think this was sometime after, uh, I had been learning about the courts of heaven but I've heard testimonies of others who I'll just say this to um, who don't practice you know about the courts of heaven that have gotten similar results as to what I've gotten um, and I wanted to say that with the preface there Okay, um, but, okay, so, through practice of praying in the Spirit, I have developed discernment in the Spirit. Um, I don't mean that I see visions, or it's just a knowing in my spirit. And... Like today, an Amber Alert, I'll just give you an example, came out. And I didn't see where, you know, where they were from and all of that. But, and, and I won't disclose here what it was, but I prayed. Pastor Mickey and I prayed together. And, and I had already prayed in the Spirit. Said, Lord, how, how should I pray concerning this Amber Alert? And then I asked Pastor Mickey to, to pray with me in agreement. And when I prayed, I got this knowing. It's like the Lord said, it's done. You know, the, you have what you've asked for. And it's a faith. What happened, what I believe happens is... I pr I pray when when I pray in the spirit the bible says when you pray in the spirit you're building up your most holy faith in yourself in your inner man that's what it says in the book of Jude chapter 1 I think it's verse 20 it says that you're building up your most holy faith so you pray in the spirit god gives you faith for that specific situation you can even have a prayer request. Say you're praying for Susie. I'm just naming names. Okay? I'm, I'm just giving an example. Well, um, then you would pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues for that specific person. You know, you might say, well, what's wrong? And the person says, I don't, I, she did, she just said it was unspoken I don't know or she may even be the one telling you this request and she says well I, I would rather that not be you know I would rather it be unspoken and you could you could pray in the spirit and say okay Lord 
you know what's wrong with Susie. Or you know what her request is. Um, and let's just say that it's something for her. Um, you can even get words of knowledge for other people. But let's just say that it's for her. That she's praying for something for her. Um, then you could, you could pray in the Spirit and then God will give you, here's what I want you to pray. And you can pray and release that into the atmosphere without, without even knowing what it is she wants you to pray for. Okay? And that's how you pray. And I believe that is the simplest way I've found on how to pray in faith. Um, something you might try when you're at home, like, I wouldn't recommend this when you're in church, but when, say you're at home and you've got a prayer, prayer request list, you could, you know, here's what I have, what I used to do when I was preparing my sermons. I would say, this was before I had my prayer language, I would say, Lord, what's on your heart? And then I would I would worship the Lord with music, or if you're if you're a songwriter and a singer, then you can sing some songs that the Lord may have led you to write, or whatever, um, or just worship the Lord in whatever way you know how, and just say, Lord, what's on your heart? Or maybe for you, it's sitting quietly, just meditate, you know, whatever it may be. And then you wait for the answer. And God will tell you this person needs prayer for this or that. It's going to take longer. Now, I've never done this. But I'm just giving people something to hold on to that don't have this prayer language. Uh, maybe, I guess you could say an experiment to try. Um, but... This, but this is, see, this is how easy it is. Okay? And I want you to know that God God wants you. you no, know let me I'm just gonna pray for you. Father, I just thank you for the Holy Spirit. You know, Lord Jesus, you said Hang on just a second. I'm sensing the Lord is saying something. If you want to pray in the spirit with me, you can. Lord, I, whatever it is that you're saying is clear. Okay. I'm going to move on with the prayer and then just Holy Spirit. Whatever it is, I just ask that you would reveal to me what it is you're trying to say. So, back to the prayer. Father, I just thank you for the Holy Spirit that is our helper. That Jesus prayed for you to, to send. He said when that, that we would know, that the disciples would know that he was sitting at, the right, at your right hand when the Holy Spirit came down upon them when that day of Pente when when the cloven tongues of fire which she didn't say that exactly but when the promise of the Father came down upon them Father 
I ask right now that you would pour out upon your people the spirit of grace and supplication, that you would show them how to apply what I have just stated here, that you would teach them how to pray as you've taught me how to pray, Father, that you would teach them how to effectively pray, how to pray in a way that gets answers, not necessarily the answers they want, but the answers that are according to your will. Father, I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Father, okay, I'm sensing from the Lord we need to do this curse breaking prayer, okay? This is going to, I believe, this is going to break some things up. That was a feeling I was getting from the Lord, something to that effect. And, um, so Father, according to your word, according to as you've asked me, uh, and I apologize, folks, for all of the, um, background noise. But, Um, so, Father, according to your word, I ask that you would read, that, that, that as, I, as I pray this prayer with them, that you would confirm your words with signs and wonders. Whatever it is that you were telling me that you wanted to do as we prayed this, I ask that it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, also... Actually, let's, let's, let's pray the prayer and I'll, I'll say all that afterwards. Um, I know, okay. Also, um, I'll just go ahead and establish this. If you want deliverance after this, you can go to www.justind.com. That's, that's one place. Another one is www.boblarson.org. And www.dwjd.org. JustinD.com, BobLarson.org, and DWJD.org. Um, DWJD.org, they're going to, on the home page, is going to have information about the ministry, and then it will say, you know, if you'd like deliverance and inner healing for one of our ministers, or deliverance ministers, click here. Uh, you'll want to tap on the click here button. And um, once you do that, then once you click on that button, then it's going to take you to a page that has four regions. And it will give you the states and countries, whatever that's encompassing each region. What you'll want to do is you'll want to click on, go, look and see which region you're at. And then, and then on the bottom, it'll have four buttons, one for each region. You'll want to tap on that button. Fill out your name, email, phone number, and message. And then hit submit. And once you hit submit, and you'll want to fill out the whole form. And once you do that and then hit submit, it's going to give you, uh, they're going to get back with you within the next 24 to 48 hours. At the time that I'm recording this, it is uh, Saturday. Um, so if you were to submit it as soon as, you know, say you watched it, uh, as soon as it up got uploaded or you listened to it or whatever, um, and you submitted it, they probably wouldn't get back to you until sometime next week. So, 
um, and also, I would highly encourage you to uh, on the website. It's got on justind.com. They've got Frontline's newsletter and the the um, TBE newsletter. Frontlines is Spiritual Warfare Teaching. TBE is the Blind Exorcist podcast episode and links. And you'll, uh, you'll want, I would highly encourage you to, you know, your resource on learning more about deliverance would be that website, that podcast, I believe. So, um, and you've got, you've got great things in store. Those of you that start on this journey to deliverance today and also regardless of where you are I I feel the capitalization from the Lord on deliverance but regardless of who where you are if you're if you're um prodigal coming home or if you're a non believer, I mean a non Christian and and you you know you're saying, I want to know this Jesus um or you're a Christian and you're wanting to go higher um, in the Lord. And you're wanting your prayers to be more effective. And you're wanting to be cleansed. You're wanting to raise the bar so that God raises the anointing in your life. Say this prayer with me. And as we established, say it. In faith, I mean, you don't have to pray in the Spirit before you say it or anything like that, like I was telling you about. Just say it with authority. Believing that what, you, what, what you're praying is going to happen, okay? Say, Father. Oh, and also, I forgot to say this. Those of you, there's going to be some of you that need, or a lot, of, I'm sensing a lot, that are going to need to renounce cessationism. In order to receive your prayer language. You know, I, I was prayed for, I think, three times before I got it this last time. I believe I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit before. But. I. The prayer language was the only thing, you know, and, and I say that. There's continual fillings. And, but anyway. But the thing that, the, the tap part was missing. The, you know, they say, before you get your prayer language, it's like the, the tap, the tap water, the tap for the tap water is off. And then when you pray in the spirit, it's like, the, it's like um, turning on a sink. And the water pouring out. Things like that. So anyway. Say this with me. Say Father. I believe in my heart. And confess with my mouth. That you raised Jesus from the dead. I now call you. My Lord and Savior. Forgive all of my sins. Even as I forgive those. Who have sinned against me. Satan. I bind you this day. In the name. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority I have in Jesus Christ. I rebuke and destroy. The power. Of every. Ancestral curse. Directed against me. I break. Any and all vows. Oaths. Blood covenants. Rituals and ceremonies. I renounce all sorcery. Witchcraft. False gods. False religion. And all curses of death. Destruction. 
suicide, murder, violence, abandonment, rejection, perversion, infirmity, and disease. I declare this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In so doing, I ask now that you would baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire, sealing our intimate relationship forever and ever. Excuse me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you enjoyed this video or this podcast, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, rate the show. Um, also, you can go to www.kingdomadvance.family.blog. K-I-N-G-D-O-M-A-D-V-A-N-C-E dot family dot blog. Go to the menu, the primary menu, and then hit About Us, and that will give you on the very bottom all the places except for the phone number that's listed there. I need to take that off, but um, all everything except for the phone number, uh, it, it'll, li it'll list all the places you can contact us. Now... I'm going to pray in agreement with you. Um, now, your mind is going to get you to think, well, you're faking it. Don't buy into that. Don't, uh, don't allow the intellect to talk you out of this. Don't allow the enemy through the intellect to talk you out of this. Um, I had to pray and ask the Lord to, um, I think I prayed and asked the Lord to give me a resolve, more or less, to push past the analyzing, to get out of the way, because, you know, he just said, get out of the way. And it was hard at first, but then when months came later, and my mind from time to time would still try to get me to think, well, you're, this is fake. I already had experience to back up the fact that it wasn't. So, Father, I just pray, before I pray in agreement, I pray that, Lord, you would give them a resolve to push past the analyzing. The Lord says that with this gift that you are receiving tonight, He is going to lay a burden on your heart, a, a spirit of intercession on your heart. You ready? Alright, I'm going to pray in agreement with you and just, like I said, speak the syllables in faith that Jesus gives you and He will, give, he will take care of the rest. <clears throat> he is calling people out of the new age right now new age movement um and and even from last week when i talked about satanists and things there's gonna be people that are coming out of the new age movement or satanism things like that and into the kingdom that are going to receive great mantles, great, great um, prophetic assignments, prayer assignments. And I, and I hear the Lord saying that he's going to send them right back into where he saved them out of to minister, to evangelize. Um... 
to evangelize the lost. That will be their mission field. The dream that I had, and I stated it before, where the lady read the Bible. She didn't know what book she was supposed to be reading. She was in this cult. She didn't know it. And this coach had given her a dream. They called them uh, coaches. Uh, they had given her a book. It was the Bible. Um, and she stood up at the end of the dream. Took charge of the meeting that they had. And she said, anything that is not in this book is... Uh, that Yeah, that is not as... Um, and this book is not holy. Or any any book that is not that does, does not have everything that's in this book is not holy. The Lord is saying that that dream has come to its maturity, it's come to its fullness, and this is about to happen. That dream that I had is about to happen. I'm hearing too, a cry has come up before the Lord regarding this, the persecution, the shunning, the murder of his prophets. In another dream, I heard the voice of, I don't know if it was an awakening angel, although one had appeared to me before in, in that dream, but it, I don't know what it was because the voice didn't sound like his, but the voice said, heed the sound of the trumpet. And and I'm hearing the Lord say that the gallows that was meant for Mordecai will, will uh, be for Haman. And in this case, it's talking about those that are persecuting the prophets. The fate that they wanted the prophets to have will be their fate. Talking about the true prophets of the Lord. He's going to start vindicating prophets. Who have been. Or even just you know. Prophetic. Voicemen. Well I, I just sense you know prophets. He's going to start vindicating his prophets. His true prophets of the Lord. And, and the Lord is drawing a line in the sand right now. He's marking. I can sense right now. He's marking those that are truly his prophets, that are truly seeking after him. And he's going to vindicate them. Anything else would you want to say? I'm still doing the podcast. Okay. The Lord said, Behold, the ten plagues have arrived. Referencing what I said earlier about the, the gods of the church. He said, Behold, the ten plagues have arrived. The shaking is here. Put your seatbelt on because this is going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Father, I ask that you would seal this word with our, in our hearts. You're saying if we get into the prayer closet... Because there's so much more revelation that would prolong this podcast. That if we would get into our prayer closet, if we would seek your face, we would hear your heart. We would know for each one of us individually what it is that you're saying in this time. And so, Lord, be it according to your word. In Jesus' name. I pray a special blessing over the ministry of Dr. Bob Larson. 
over all those that are listening here. I also come against the spirit of mind control over the people of God, whether it be some, in some way in this ministry or if it be that they experience it through other means. I judge you by the authority of Jesus Christ given to me as a judge in the courts of heaven. You are powerless over the people of God, spirit of mind control. verse you like to use so much I'm going to use against you Satan touch not God's anointed and do his prophets no harm because you have touched the body of Christ now All the curses that you put, may have put on them are going to come back on you seven times greater and they're going to lift off of God's people. In Jesus' name. Also, I feel led to say this from the Lord. Concerning any spirit of mind control that may have, that, that has seeped in to the courts of heaven, teaching even unbeknownst possibly to Robert Henderson, I judge you, spirit of mind control. You loose the people of God now. And I declare the Holy Spirit is the teacher. No man nor woman has any power over the people of God. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but except through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who teaches through me. It is the Holy Spirit who teaches through Robert Henderson. It is the Holy Spirit who teaches through those whom God chooses. Through Dr. Francis Miles and... Katie Souza and others. May the ten plagues come upon the kingdoms of mind control this day. And may the, the mind control spirit be evicted from the body of Christ. And anyone who is being used as a pawn and don't even know it, Father, I ask that you would bring them to their knees. And that you would change maybe even any teaching methods that they may be doing that is wrong. In Jesus' name. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Again, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Final thing, I think, this is the... Is that the spirit of mind control has been put on trial by the courts of heaven. And right now is actually being... Held, is that right? Lord, held in contempt of court. Never mind. Uh, I didn't get a clear response whenever I, I was at, when I asked the Lord about that. So, um, yeah, a trial has officially started concerning the spirit of mind control. So we're gonna start to see some some things in the body of Christ concerning this. So, 
If there's anything else, I'll do another segment, but if not, then I'll see you. Uh, I'm just kind of... But anyway, if not, I'll see you on the next podcast. God bless. I told you that if I had anything else to say that I would, or if the Lord had anything else to say, I'd just come back on another segment. Well, the Lord said, during this time, he is going to judge denomination or do away with denominationalism. And also, get ready. We're going to level five now of the anointing. So, thank you all very much for bearing with me and see you in the next podcast. God bless.